What's up YouTube? So today just wanted to talk about the best hunting, fishing, and outdoors watch on the market. So of course I'm going to be talking about a GPS watch, right? The one with ABC functions, altimeter, barometer, compass. Has to be this watch, right? Nah, nah, no it isn't. It is the G-Shock DW5600 MS1 watch. Why is this watch the best? Well, to start out, a couple different things. Um, this watch is nice and small compared to a lot of the compass watches out there, a lot of the ABC style watches, a lot of the um, GPS watches on the market. It is 13.4 millimeters tall, which it doesn't even wear that tall. I believe the case thickness is, or diameter is right around 50, uh, 52, somewhere in there. I think it's 48.9 is what Casio lists it at. And I, ha I see specs differing throughout the system, even between Asia Casio and USA Casio. So I apologize for not having the exact numbers. And even the thickness of the case, I've seen it anywhere from 12.25 to 13.4. Um, but the main point is, this thing is small, it fits under clothes, it melts right into your clothes that you wear hunting, you can layer with it, you don't even notice that you're wearing it. This thing holds up awesome. It's a G-Shock. And at the end of the day, it's shock resistant, it's mud resistant, it's durable as heck. This particular watch is the military spec, so it, it has a matte black finish, it has a negative display, it has black ion push buttons, and then the black, I believe it's ion for the clasp over here as well. And you know, it's a blacked out, there's nothing shiny on it. It does have a negative display. If there's the one negative thing I'll say about this watch, and it's not even really a negative to me, but it is for the watch in general, it has a negative display. And that's the one thing in reviews that you will see people complain about. Uh, there are certain angles, like this one right here, where it's tougher to read. For me, this isn't a big thing at all. I don't mind turning my wrist a little bit to see the time. Is it tough to see in the sun? Absolutely. If I put this in the light, I'm trying to get it in the light. Yeah, sure. It's, it's tough to read, but you just have to move it a little bit, a few degrees, and that's not a problem at all. I think, you know, the pros of a blacked out military spec watch outweigh the negatives. And I'll say this, there are a ton of different versions of the 5600 G-Shock watch. So if you don't like the negative display, there's a positive display out there. There are different colors out there. There are a ton of different options out there, but this configuration is the best for hunting. Um, it has a backlight. Um, let's see if I can get the backlight going here. If I shut down my, oh, it's probably gonna be tough to see. I do have the flash on my camera. But at the end of the day, it has a really awesome backlight. This thing has 12 and 24 hour capabilities, so you can run in either mode. It has alarms, it has a countdown timer, it has a stopwatch, it's 200 meter uh, water resistance, and it has a calendar that goes to 2099. There are a couple different module numbers out here. The module 3229 is this version. There are other versions out there. I believe there's one like 1445. It doesn't go to 2099. So that's the only difference that I'm aware of in the modules. Um, at the end of the day, this thing just takes a beating and keeps on ticking. I've had it for about three and a half years, bought it used, and it looks excellent. Yeah, there are some marks on the band that you'll see if I get them under the right light. You really have to get them under light to look at them. Otherwise, you can't see them. I didn't even clean this thing up for the review, so you do see a little. I, I shower in this thing and everything. I should, probably shouldn't even say that. but um, It just takes a licking, keeps on beating. You know, you can wear it anywhere. It melts right in. Fishing, it works excellent. Outdoors, excellent. Hunting, you can layer with it. Um, the backlight is really key in those hunting situations where you need to look at um, your watch, get the time, but you don't want to spook any game that might be around you. So this is a really, really cool watch. My big advantage and the reason I go to this watch now instead of my Phoenix 3, which is, gosh, a couple years newer. I don't even think my Phoenix 3 is a year old yet. But at the end of the day, uh, this particular watch has a lot more functions. I mean, it has the ABC, so it has the altimeter, barometer, it has a compass, uh, it has matte features in there. I can guide myself. 
The Garmin has an app store out there, so there are just a ton of different apps that you can use. I can use this thing to go golfing and, and dial in with my GPS. Really, really, really cool tool watch that has a ton of different applications. The catch is, it is very, very thick. And I didn't think this would bug me. You know, all the watches nowadays are large. You know, that's kind of the trend the past few years. Everything is going very large. This is no different. Um, it's a very large watch. If you compare it against the G-Shock, it is just a lot thicker. And I don't know if I can get them both on camera at the same time, but it is just considerably thicker than the G-Shock. And to me, it's just, it's a, it's a deal breaker in a, in a hunting situation. Um, this thing is so big that a lot of times if I move my wrist the wrong way, it will actually hit this GPS button and I'll start golfing or doing cardio or something like that on accident. And it's just too big. It gets in the way. Um, when I bend my wrist, it, it affects my wrist. And, um, at, you know, in some cases, it's not a big deal at all. The other thing with this watch, with the Phoenix, Phoenix 3, you do have to charge it up. It lasts about six days, seven days if you don't use a GPS a whole lot. Now, if you use a GPS a lot, it might only last two or three days. Um, if you're in a hunting situation where you're using the GPS for most of the day, it's probably going to need to be recharged within a day or two. And that's a big downfall. If I'm on a hunting trip and I don't have the capability to charge my watch, I'm going to go with the G-Shock. And, you know, the other thing with this, a GPS does take a while to access. I have a Garmin handheld GPS that works much, much better than this particular watch. And then when I'm in a hunting situation, I always have a compass with me. I never rely on a watch. So it, you know, my watch doesn't need to have a compass because I rarely pull up the compass on this particular watch. You know, the other thing to mention, Sunto and some other manufacturers actually make compasses that you can put on wristbands. Um, so that's not a big thing to me. Altimeter, I live in the Midwest, not a huge deal to me. Again, my handheld GPS would have that capability along with the barometer. Um, so, you know, to me, the thickness is just a deal breaker. Charging it up every five, six days, deal breaker. Me accidentally hitting the GPS, another big downfall of the watch. Don't get me wrong, the functionality, the looks of this thing are excellent. It's just the form factor of it is just, it needs work. And if you have a ginormous wrist, maybe this is perfect for you. I actually have a decent sized wrist. I think mine is 7.25 inches in diameter, which um, I, th I think that's above the normal wrist size. So actually, before I had the G-Shock, I had a different Casio. I actually had this Forester here. And this thing worked really well. I used it for hunting for probably six or seven months. Immediately, though, it started to mark up on the face of the watch. Um, it has deep markings. They're all white, scratch. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. And to me, this just bugged the crap out of me. But probably that the one thing that bugged me even more was the noise. This thing was so noisy. And I'm sure there's a third-party strap out there. But this thing creaked. It crocked, creaked, whatever. If it was cold out, you could hear this watch. It bugged the crap out of me. If you're a fisherman, not a big deal. But for a hunter, you know, um, if anything makes noise, you're really cognizant of that. And this thing made a ton of noise. So when the battery finally died, I upgraded and went to this G-Shock 5600. Now, I have had a couple other G-Shocks. And my issues with the other G-Shocks, they worked flawlessly. They were extremely durable. Uh, the only thing was the form and the fit. They were just so big that they didn't fit too well. And... That was my biggest concern with the other G-Shocks. Um, I believe I had a Golfman, and then I don't remember the other version. I want to say it was a 9600, um, but at the end of the day, it was just very, very, very big. And same thing. It would get in the way. You couldn't layer with it. Um, you know, If you wear a hoodie, even the hoodie would kind of get caught up on it, and it, it would just bug me. It, the size just bugs me. And as a hunter where you know size and everything you put in a pack, that's a big thing for somebody who hunts. And if you're outside a lot and you're doing a lot of layering, the last thing you wanna do is have a watch effect with how you wear your clothes or how you layer your clothes. And you know, with the G-Shock, I don't have to worry about that. I throw it on and you know, don't worry about it at all. Where if I am wearing you know, this 
Phoenix 3, I have to worry about um, what I'm wearing for clothes. So even with this Henley that I'm wearing, um, you know, I can put it over there, but you can really, really see the watch, kind of the L print, and then, and then I'll stick out a little bit. It's just something I do not like dealing with. For some other people, it might not be a deal breaker. For me, it is a deal breaker. So if you're looking for the best hunting, fishing, outdoors watch that you can wear, set, not worry about it, look no further than the Casio G-Shock 5600. I really, really recommend this model. Like I said, there's other G-Shocks out there, but what you're going to run into is the same problem as the Phoenix 3. It's just the size factor. And, you know, this thing is not going to get in the way. It's only going to work. It's durable. You're not going to find a more durable watch out there. I'm sorry. They do have Mudmans and everything else out there, but as far as G-Shock compared to everything else in the market, you know, G-Shocks have an excellent name in the watch industry for a reason, and that's why they're so popular in the military, special forces. This is the watch. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of other options out there. Sunto Garmin. Um, i trying to think of the other big name. Is it Luminox? You know, you hear of some issues with those. You know, they, they can mark up the bezel, the glass, the mineral. That just doesn't happen with this. So can't recommend it enough. Have a good one.